I will start this video reading a comment left on a Gary Wayne video because it is from someone who was educated at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. And St. Andrews is an old Ivy League school where prominent world figures are educated, such as Prince William and Kate. And the commenter speaks to occult teachings at universities like St. Andrews. And I've talked at length about those educated at universities like this, especially Oxford, Cambridge, and the Royal Academies on this channel. His comment as an attendee of one of those schools confirms the polytheist patterns that shape our culture, politics, education, and religion, which is leading to the one world government and the beast system. So here's part of the comment he writes. Anyone who has studied occult science will attest to seeing the world through new eyes. It's a very frightening awakening to just how under Satan control the world is. And occult science was just the primitive precursor to his contemporary tools, science, and technology. I ended up studying IR, I'm not sure what that is, with sociology and anthropology at University of St. Andrews. I'm Scottish. It's one of the world's leading universities, and there are many students from families who are prominent world leaders, such as Prince William and Kate. It's shocking just how open these people are about occultism within their syllabus and extracurriculars, and just how militant the philosophical departments are towards Christianity. Philosophy and occult are largely synonymous, and the schools are a hunting ground for predatory occult organizations like the Masons. I swapped in my second year to study theology with biblical studies in, quote, in parentheses higher criticism, not real Bible study. The shock that knowledge of the occult brought was nothing compared to the shock I got from learning what ministers in Scotland's church are being taught. And then he goes on to explain how it's all occult. Continuing, he says, I'm usually skeptical of any Christian sermons and or books on the occult, as they are usually the product of either poor research, folklore, conspiracy theory, or ignorance. And I can say on this heart on hand, this man, referring to Gary Wayne, knows his stuff and provides very lucid, logical presentation of the facts. He's very good at not drawing his own conclusions and providing a very rounded apologetic. Masonry is a very real world force, and I'm guilty of revulsion towards its brazen communion with Satan, but we must be respectful of them as people and their world view. I feel this brother accomplishes his task respectfully and in a spirit of meekness. This is a Holy Spirit guided book, and I can urge my brothers and sisters enough to spend this video, spread this video around as much as possible and read his book. And that's the end of the quote the end of the comment, and I agree with this man because most of my channel is also uh, proving of what Gary Rain writes about in his books after 40 years of researching, and that's why when anyone makes a hateful comment against him, I do not like that because I've learned a lot from him, and he's just not wrong. Later in this video, I'm going to go over their statues, but first I'm going to look at St. Andrews. <coughs> St. Andrews is the oldest public university in uh, St. Andrews, Scotland, founded in 1413, the third oldest university in the English-speaking world behind Oxford and Cambridge, which are in England, and St. Andrews was part of the Scottish Enlightenment during the 18th century. St. Andrews has historical links with the United States that predate the U.S. independence. James Wilson, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, attended St. Andrews. Links with the U.S. have been maintained to the present day with recruiting and attendees, including Hillary Clinton, having received an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws from St. Andrews. St. Andrews is ranked as the best university in the U.K. in 2022, the first university to ever top Oxford and Cambridge, and it's ranked fifth in Europe. There are several student societies, but the only one listed on Wikipedia is the Celtic Society, so I'm not going to go into those. But here's an interesting tradition which should get it, give insight, and that is the Curse of Patrick Hamilton. <laughs> so situated around the town of St. Andrews are cobblestone markings denoted where Protestant martyrs were burnt at the stake. These cobblestones denote where Patrick Hamilton was martyred in 1528. According to student tradition, stepping on the Patrick Hamilton stone will cause a student to become cursed. The offender will fail his or her degree. So students are known to jump over the cobblestones when passing. The curse is said to be lifted by participating in the May Dip. The May Dip is held annually at dawn on May Day. Students 
usually stay awake until dawn, at which time they collectively run into the North Sea to the sound of madrigals sung by the university madrigal group. Students do this to cleanse themselves of any academic sins which they may have acquired by stepping on the Patrick Hamilton cobblestone before they set exams in May. So here are some of the degrees um, at that uh, university. Let's get down to that part. All right. Uh, divinity, philosophy and logic, international relations and politics, physics and astronomy, English lit, poetry, medicine and physiology. And it looks like um, phil philosophy and logic is the largest school there. So this type of education described by the commenter and by Gary Wayne and by me on my channel is the type of education indoctrination that the world leaders in different segments are getting and have been getting historically. And these are the people who shape the culture and society of the beast system. And this is not good fruit because it is literally the doctrine of demons. And over time it has gotten very bad, which you can see based on where society is now. And the reason that I do these videos is to come to an understanding um, and sort this out in my own walk and hopefully help others at the same time. So the people that are educated at these universities, they don't even have to be part of a secret society to get occult teachings, but obviously many of them are. And it's the same in the U.S. universities. One commenter, as the commenter said, occultism within their syllabus and extracurriculars and militant philosophy towards Christianity and a hunting ground for predatory occult organizations like the Masons. But it's all polytheist, Gnostic, basically Luciferian, because Satan is a temporary god of this world. So art is also taught at these universities, and I wanted to go over some sculptures in this video because they're a visual representation of their religion since many of them represent their gods, the fallen, and Nephilim. Simulacrum, meaning likeness, resemblance, a representation or imitation of a person or thing, such as a statue or painting, especially of a god, which brings the graven image of that god into this dimension. And they do it a lot with movies and music, album art, etc., but in more ancient times it was mainly statues. So first I'll go over the ones in Europe, which obviously there will be many from when paganism was the dominant religion. And supposedly it's not anymore there, but it actually is. And I get that the ancient monuments from that time are preserved, like in the museums and so forth. But as we'll see, they are still being sculpted and displayed prominently, not only in Europe, but also in the United States. So this is the Vatican Museum, and these are Greco-Roman, so that's pretty old, ending around 650 AD. Then we get this... Uh, royal palace in Genoa, Italy, and you see them here also a thousand years later. This palace is from was built in the 1650s. Then you see them here, and this is uh, in Stockholm, Sweden. It's Mills Garden. It's a sculpture garden and home of Carl Mills from the early 1900s. But it's not just in Europe. It's in the U.S., which only 300 years in the past historically. So that's long after paganism was supposed to be the dominant religion. However, you have this Diana. She is front and center between two pillars in the Boston Fine Arts Museum. And she was covered in alchemical gold and then moved there from another building in New York in the 1930s. And the man who funded the sculpture was an Epstein type of his day who groomed young girls. And he had... Uh, commissioned the sculptor to be more pubescent, so the sculptor did that. And that same guy who commissioned it, he was murdered by one of the girls that he groomed, or the girl's husband, and um, he he went on trial for that, you know, murder. And in the trial, it came out that everyone in New York society knew that he was grooming, but they didn't do anything about it. So no doubt the museum curators knew the history of this statue yet, Still, here she is, and that's not good fruit. Here's a statue of the Veil of Isis presented to Herbert Hoover by the Belgian government sometime around the 1930s. Here's Albert Pike, 
erected in D.C. around 1901. You have, um, oh, I don't have that one. There's a Taka Fountain, which is in um, the Cosmos Club in D.C. Let me see if I can pull that one up. This guy that I'm showing on the screen right now is the one who um, designed the Statue of Liberty. And the Taka Fountain should be coming up. And this one has, um, it's in the Cosmos Club in D.C. And it has uh, sea monsters and titans and things like that all over it, which we'll see here. And they love their titans. Here's another one by the same uh, sculptor that did the Statue of Liberty, who's also a pagan goddess, Libertas. And it's got goddesses on it. It's got reptiles at the bottom. And on the top is more titans with these legs that come out that are like sea legs. Thanks for listening.